Hi everyone! Over the next several weeks, we will be alternating our regular Monday Chic and Cheap videos with a new series that is focused on crochet basics. And this series will be progressive in nature, so hopefully as you go through the videos, your knowledge and skills will improve, and soon you will be a crochet genius. I love crochet because it is amazing to me that you can take a simple hook, some yarn, and your own hands and create something beautiful and unique. I find that to be completely fascinating and I hope that you will enjoy this series with me. Let's begin with selecting your yarn and your hook size. As a quick tip, I would like to admit that it is way too easy to go crazy buying beautiful yarns and it can really add up. So when you're beginning, it's great to just go ahead and use the economical options that are readily available to you. The thickest yarn we'll be discussing today is bulky and super bulky weight yarn. And the great thing about yarn is that it tells you right on the package what the weight is and it also suggests a hook size for you, which makes it very easy. The next one and the most common is worsted weight yarn. It's a very versatile weight of yarn and is suitable to lots of different projects. The next one is the sport or fine weight yarn. And this is actually my favorite yarn to use, especially to make little embellishments. And it's soft, you often see it as baby yarn. It's just really nice to work with. Then we have sock weight or super fine weight yarn, which is very delicate and very nice for little embellishments, doilies, and things like that. And then of course there is the crochet thread, which can be very tricky to work with and requires a teeny tiny hook. When it comes to holding your working yarn, Find a method that is most comfortable and intuitive to you. This is how I do it, and that helps me maintain an even tension, not too loose and not too tight. Next, we'll talk about the magic ring. To make a magic ring, you put the ball of yarn behind your hand and you loop the tail over the front of your hand. Bring the working yarn up in front of your fingers and then drop it behind like that. So I'll show that to you one more time. Very simple. You're going to take your crochet hook, put it under that loop you wrapped around your fingers and pull up a loop from the working yarn. Remember the working yarn is the ball of yarn. You're going to pull it out and give your crochet hook a little twist. So we will look at that again. We're making our magic loop. Insert your hook under the loop that you created and pull up a loop from the working yarn. Pull it through. Give your crochet hook a little twist. And that is how you make a magic loop. Then you begin working your stitches into it. I prefer using the magic ring or magic loop in any projects that are worked in the round because you avoid holes as you can see here. But if you really don't like the magic loop <laughs> or magic ring, here's an alternative. You create a slip knot with your yarn and put that loop on your hook. And then you begin to chain. You will chain one for working your stitches into and the additional chains act as your first stitch. You will be working your stitches into the first chain that you made, which is the one that is furthest from the hook. So for instance, I am chaining three because I'm going to be using a half double crochet as my first stitch. So I chain three and two of the chains will act as my half double crochet and the last chain is the one that I will be working my stitches into. And 
and then you can keep working into that same stitch and then we're ready to fasten off. To fasten off my work, I like to pull the loop out, the one that was on my hook, make it nice and big, cut my working yarn, and take that tail from my working yarn and pull it through my loop to make it nice and tight and secure. As you can see, I was working the beginning tail underneath my stitches, so I do not need to do anything with that. It is secure underneath the stitches, and I can just cut it off. But the other tail needs to be woven in, so I'm threading a needle, and I am weaving the tail in beneath the stitches on the back of my project. I generally weave through about 8 to 10 stitches, and that holds the tail in place so that it will not come undone. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this first video of Crochet Basics. I hope it was helpful to you. Please do not hesitate to let me know if you have any questions at all. And as always, thank you so much for watching.